I can't tell you how to further your business career. I can't tell you how to make the kind of friends that you want. I can't tell you how to find the love of your life. I can't even tell you how to do math past the algebraic level. Uh, there are many things that I can't do. There are many things that I can't tell you. But there is something that I know very well, and it is living with depression. Living with depression, uh, for me, it's the result of schizophrenia and, uh, in the past, the misuse of substances uh, to try and self-medicate uh, in the past. And also the, the nagging desire to try and understand reality itself, to try and understand the universe, try and understand why we're here, if there's a reason, and I'm trying to find it. I think that I found it, but I don't ultimately know anything. What I can tell you uh, with a very large degree of certainty is that I know how to live with depression. Um, now, I don't have... I don't have a, a college degree to, sh degree to sh put before you and say, I've achieved all this, I'm in the career that I want, um, I have achieved uh, the kind of existence that I want, I'm still working towards that. Um, but when it comes to surviving with the desire uh, to either die or harm yourself or uh, just, the, just the hatred of yourself, and, you know, I know how these thoughts can tear at you like bat's wings fluttering around you constantly. It feels like you're being torn at uh, by these thoughts from every angle, from every direction, constantly judging yourself, constantly uh, saying, why can't I be like this person in this way, like that person in that way? Why can't I just be happy like everyone else? Why can't I just, just be content with what I have and work towards what I want? And why is it so hard to push forward through every day to get up and actually to do something, to either go to work, go to school, to be a parent? Why can't, why can't I just have the same seemingly survival tactic that everyone else has uh, that they employ within a, a societal spectrum uh, from top to bottom, if you believe in that kind of thing, uh, from poorest to richest? Uh, it feels like we don't have that same survival uh, technique that we don't have that same desire to just push forward, just keep on pushing. We don't. We feel like we don't have that ability because life for us is very painful. And I can't tell you that we'll stop being painful. It will continue to be painful. But I can tell you a little bit about how I found a degree of contentment and how my depression is very much mitigated by this degree of contentment. You know, I can't say that I'm a happy person, but I think I define happiness in a very different way than most people. I think that most people don't think about if they're happy and what they really want. I think that most people kind of gravitate towards a certain direction in life and then they just kind of march forward. Um, and it feels like a lot of people don't assess things like we do, that they don't really, they don't really have the same questions because they don't have the same nagging feeling that we're just, we're just empty inside. You know, a lot, if you, if anybody looks deep enough, they can find that part of themselves, but most people don't. They shy away from that feeling of emptiness that we are overwhelmed by. Um, when it comes to surviving with depression, uh, I will say that the way I found purpose was very interesting. Let me explain. Um, the guiding star in my life is uh, basically the purpose to understand life, to understand uh, the forces that created this universe, uh, develop my own opinions spiritually about them and scientifically, um, try and find meaning with, meaning with all my experiences, try and j just take a part of all that I've experienced so that it doesn't go to waste, so that I can analyze everything that only I know and produce something that will help others. Um, produce, you know, whether it be through writing or YouTube videos like this, to produce some material that uh, self-analysis -anal will benefit um, everyone else who truly needs it and really we all need self-analysis. I want to produce, I want to first analyze and produce materials uh, that will aid in that self-analysis and I also seek to uh, be kind to as many people as possible and the way I find I found purpose which was first and the way I found kindness is very interesting so how I found purpose. I've always been very depressed my entire life from when I was a little kid and I started to question the nature of reality and people's beliefs very early on. My parents are, never raised me with any religion, and I didn't believe the kids at school when they you know, believed in the Christian idea of God. 
So I looked up all the different definitions of all the religions when I was about eight years old. And I still remember that moment when I was looking up and I felt something more uh, when I started reading all these definitions. And you know, I, for, uh, the first religion I came upon that made sense to me about ending suffering, because I was suffering, was Buddhism. And I delved into that. You know, I talk about this in other videos, so I delved into Buddhism first. And uh, without giving too much detail, uh, I, found, I found myself on a journey trying to understand how other people believed, why they believed what they believed, and what their motivations were, what they wanted, what it was their reward, or and which people are just trying to be kind without the reward of heaven or the punishment of hell, which people are good without witness, without hope, without reward. If you are, if you're, if you are a good person without the hope that your actions will succeed, that people will see your actions or that you will get a reward. If you are a good person purely to be good, to be kind, that's the kind of person I eventually discovered that I wanted to be. To not just act to gain something in return, to not gain anything in return, to act correctly, to be kind, to be generous, to be loving, to be compassionate, just for the sake of it. And I eventually sought to be that kind of person once I started to analyze all the different motivations for how people, uh, for how people, you know, judge their existence and you know for a while you know that worked when I was younger than when I had when I hit 15 I got fed up and then I went into this state where where I just I really delved deep down into this pit of sorrow and you know I didn't really do a lot of writing or drawing uh, but well when I was in school even at this time in this time of sorrow I started, you know, I, I did want to die at the age of 15. I wanted to die. But I kept on writing philosophy and just my views on things. I wanted to preserve, and this is the reason why I was writing philosophy. I wanted to preserve my consciousness for, for the time when I did die. That there would be record of my consciousness. That there would be record of something that was lost when my death came, when I ended my life. I wanted, I wanted my views to be, to be at least seen, my ideas. And, you know, they were... They were not, looking back at my philosophy, they weren't bad ideas, they were compassionate ideas. But then I started to uncover more and more questions as I delved into my own individual consciousness. And the more that I really followed every strand of my think, every strand of my thinking, the more I, the more that I found that there was more to discover. That there was more to life than just what information is given to you but information that you discover through this very specific looking glass that is our minds, our individual consciousness. Uh, and uncovering these questions and desiring answers led me eventually, years later, back to the path and gave me a purpose. I started to get good at writing because I was writing so much. I started to get good at drawing because I was drawing so much, trying to express myself. Uh, and, you know, I didn't know what I was trying to draw at the time, but I was just expressing this pain later on when I look back at my drawings. And I started to gain a level of self-understanding. Now, how you come to the purpose that you need in order to push forward is will be completely individual. It will be it will be something that is very significant to and intrinsic to who you are. And whoever you are, you are very valuable because there is not ever going to be another person like you, and has it ever been a person like you? And the, the more we understand about consciousness, even scientifically, even if, even if we're just talking about science, the more we start to realize how much we don't understand about it because it is so complicated, it is so complex. And that complexity that exists within you will never exist again and has never existed. So even if you can't live for yourself, but you wanna try and live for other people and just blast out all of that, all of that, um, individual perspective that is very unique to you and show the world what that is that can be a perfect purpose in and of itself and that was my purpose now the way i the way i continue towards this this purpose um you know even dealing with depression day after day uh minute after minute hour after hour is following my reasoning to its logical conclusion what does this mean? This means that when I follow, you know, let's say I, I, I want to, I just want to give up. I'm like, okay, this is, I'm not having a good day. Maybe it's not even anything that happened during that day. It's just, I'm just really sad that day. Then I will, 
I will st I will follow the logical conclusions that I make when I'm depressed. I'll say, okay, if I'm having a bad day, I just want to give up. What is giving up going to do? What is giving up going to lead me toward? Is there going to be anything that I get out of it? Or am I just going to feel worse? Is giving up going to make this experience that I'm feeling worse? And the answer is almost always yes. It's going to bring me into a, to a bigger defeat and a bigger defeat and a bigger defeat. And I'll have to climb back out of that pit if I ever get the urge to live again. And there has to be a point that you reach when you're saying, okay, I'm going to cut off going into this, this pit of just this whirling sorrow that these thoughts will drag you toward, that will drag you deep within, that will tear at you. And really that pit of giving up is much harder to be in than just cutting that sorrow off and moving forward. And sometimes it's all about not thinking. And that's very hard for somebody who's depressed. It's very hard to stop the thinking process. But with meditation, I've learned how to do it. And also with, okay, I'm just deciding to just stop the thoughts uh, in that direction right now. And, you know, it takes practice to veer off from one direction of thinking and go towards another one. Or to just not think about something. It's not something that comes easy to us. But the more we train ourselves towards that, uh, the more we will gain the ability to control this these lines of thinking but we a lot of the time even we don't want to a lot of the time we simply are we simply are this way and we we just don't feel like we can be anything else because we've always been this way and once we get into this line of thinking it just feels so natural we naturally just fall down that pit and developing ways to stop that fall is very vital uh before before you even think that a purpose is all that you need because controlling your thinking is is just as important as having that purpose to shoot towards, to slowly roll toward your life towards. And um, there are many factors that constantly assail us. Maybe we have us uh, abusive family members. Maybe we have we don't have enough friend as ma as many friends as we want. Maybe we don't uh, serve as big a function in society as we want. But it's ultimately comparing yourself to other people, that will just cause one wound after another to your psyche, your heart, and it will ultimately make you n not necessarily numb because you'll still feel the pain, but it'll make you overwhelmed and you become, you'll become catatonic as an individual uh, emotionally. Uh, so we also have to learn to not compare ourselves to other people, not say, okay, this is how I am, uh, and that person is so much better than me. You should always hold yourself in relation to the next step down the line of working towards something in your life. Never compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to who you want to be the next minute, the next hour, the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year. Compare yourself to your path only, not other people's path. And if you can learn to do that, then you'll, you will stop a great majority of these, um, these thoughts that tear at us. Uh, when we look at other people and see how happy they are, see how content they are. Um, surviving with depression is 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 never going to be easy, uh, but with practice, with with trying to learn how to control your reasoning, control control the lines of thought that are very much in your power to control, and to control uh, how you compare yourself to others. To this all this happening mentally and learning to just move forward in life the best that you can, uh, taking one step after another, developing all these abilities within, within your brain, and knowing that you are a very specific consciousness, that you'll have to develop your own techniques. You can't just take somebody else's techniques and use them all word for word. You have to develop a proper relationship to yourself. Because I've seen people lose themselves that weren't necessarily depressed, that just never looked at themselves and whatever kind of person that they were that they could have been as an individual was just lost because they never they never evaluated themselves as an individual as a depressed person we have to because that nags at us and we we were forced to look at ourselves because of these thoughts constantly concentrate at these these points of, of weakness that we that we have in any given mind everyone has their mental weaknesses but anyway um i'm going to end the video there I hope this has been useful, and I'll probably make more videos like this in the future if you want to hear more. 
Uh, if you are a depressed person or schizophrenic or you have some kind of mental disability, feel free to contact me on Facebook. Uh, I'll, live, I'll leave a link in the comment section. I mean, not the comment section. The description below. Um, my name is Hunter Salazar. You can contact me and we can talk about this if you need to. And um, I'm always open to recommendations in the comment section below and having conversations down there if you're open to having conversations in the comment section. Uh, but um, hey, if you want to help the channel, hit that like down there. And um, thank you very much for watching and uh, stay strong, brothers and sisters, because it is a long road. I'm not going to lie to you. So be strong. Find strength.